Anyways guys, for today's topic, I wanted to go ahead and remake one of the first videos I've done that I put on this channel, which was my first review of the bike, telling you why I thought this was the best beginner starter bike, comparing it to the other main starter bikes that are usually seen as alternatives. Those would be this, either the CBR 300R, the Ninja 300, or the R3. So when talking about those bikes, I'm just going to refer to them as those bikes. When I'm talking about my CBR 500R, I'll just be like this bike, just so you know going forward which bikes I'm talking about. So quick background as always, appropriate with these videos. This is a 2014 Honda CBR 500R. I've had the bike for more than a year now. Do you know how to use turn signals? Don't feel safe going around you. So a big question people have is, which bike should I start on? Which bike is for me? A lot of things come into consideration when making the choice of those bikes. They have to do with price, value, capabilities of the bike, comfort, comfort more specifically to how comfortable you'll be learning on the bike and how beginner friendly it is. So I'm gonna start off by saying why those smaller bikes are better than the 500R. I'll then go into why I think the 500R is better and ultimately the better choice for you. So beginning with why the those bikes, those three beginner bikes are better than the 500R. Typically they are cheaper. That's a big one, especially if you're starting with motorcycles, you're not too sure how you'll like it. Get a feel for them. You don't have a lot of money to spend typically with your first motorcycle. Those bikes are typically maybe like a grand or so cheaper. Once you start getting into the used market, you can find a lot of good deals on both of them. Typically you'll find you'll still find a better deal on those those bikes. Aside from money, there's also those bikes being a little more beginner friendly. This will really come down to preference, but if you're a smaller rider or you're more intimidated by like a larger bike, the CBR 500R is in fact a bit of a bigger bike. Those bikes, just because they are more narrow, they might be a bit lower to the ground. You might feel a bit more comfortable on those bikes when starting off. You might not be as intimidated by the bike size. Just to counter that a little bit, I mean, once you're on any bike, once you get going, I mean, you don't feel the weight of the bike. Mind over body in that situation where you're thinking, oh, the smaller size is gonna be more beneficial. Another thing is those bikes are lighter, lighter, a bit more nimble. That has to do with them weighing less and they have more narrow tires. Flickability on all those bikes is gonna feel a little better. Evil these days. The fun factor, when I've read a lot of the reviews and seen a lot of the reviews on those bikes, people find that the those 300s typically are a bit more fun to ride just because they rev out a lot higher up. So you're higher in the rev range when you're riding them. So you kind of feel like you've got a more race-like ride and experience on those bikes just because you are really pushing those bikes harder. Whereas with this bike, you don't really have to. It's a mid-range torquey bike, RPMs there, so you don't really have to crank the hell out of the bike to get it going. So those are mostly the pros for those bikes. Like I said, before picking this bike, I was contemplating between those three other bikes along with the 500R, trying to decide which one was for me. And obviously I ultimately settled with this one, so I'll tell you why. First thing, and I think it's most important, is with the 500R, I didn't really need a bike that I had to crank the hell out of to get Oh, excuse me to get it to feel alive and this is this feels more like a grown-up bike it's a bigger bike it doesn't look as small I'm gonna start countering some of the other things in the past that I've talked about as pros of the those smaller bike first thing is more flickable because it has smaller tires and a slider so two parts there you have smaller tires so yes it's more flickable but the downside to that is if you go over a bump or a crack or anything like that you're gonna definitely feel that more definitely more prominent especially at higher speeds if you do a lot of highway or high-speed riding on bad roads like that. You're gonna appreciate the fatter tires on this bike even though it equals a little less flickability, but I don't think it would be too much. People say those smaller bikes feel like toys just because of how light and nimble they are, which is fun, but there's that trade-off there. So yes, this is actually a heavier bike. I think it's about 420 pounds wet, and you have the CBR 600RR, which is actually a lighter bike, I think closer to 400 pounds. And then you have 
those smaller 300 series bikes, which are about maybe 380. So people are like, yeah, so it's lighter. And so even though it has a smaller displacement engine and has less horsepower, it's not pulling as much. Yeah, maybe, but when it comes to higher speed riding again, you'll appreciate the additional weight that this bike offers. Really? Turn signal, bitch. When I accelerated right there, I said I was getting zero miles per gallon. Whoops. Let's pull in here and make sure the camera's working and fill up on some gas. Ugh. So again, when it comes to higher speed riding, you'll appreciate the additional weight of this bike. You're not being thrown around as much. You feel more grounded once the wind and higher speeds kick in. One thing that can also be seen as a pro, this bike often gets mistaken for the CBR 600 double R. No, I don't want my receipt. What am I going to do with it? Return my gas? No. Bitch. This looks like a big bike. This looks like a grown-up bike. With those 300s, there's no mistaking that they're smaller bikes. They look much more narrow. Oh man, this is this is definitely one of the things I hate about the 500R, those. At least this model is the key. It's every time I'm at a gas station, too. You have to get it, like, really right. Because it is more of a mid-range bike. You just have power everywhere when you're riding, for the most part. That you don't have to be at the higher rev ranges as with the other bikes to get the most out of the bike. It tends to be a bit more economical by like a few miles per gallon compared to smaller ones. So I can easily usually get about 60 or 70 miles per gallon with this bike. But the fact that you're revving them out so much. So I'm turning left, which way are you turning? I hate crossing over this road. Fuel economy is one of your priorities as it was with me. This is the better bike for you if that alone is one of your priorities. Styling wise with the new 2016 CBR 500Rs, I would have to say that, man, I'm never gonna cross. I am never going to make it. What are you doing, friend? God damn it, I need a crossover. Pretty sure I had the right away. And we successfully turned around. That was bad. Probably wasted more gas than I'd like to admit. Anyways, going to the raw data of, or the raw facts of the bike, the CBR 500R is, in fact, despite the fact that it is heavier, it does have the larger engine still. It is quicker, 0 to 60 times, 0 to 100 times. The top speeds are maybe a little better on this but i mean you're not gonna want to realistically try to get up to the top speed of these bikes that's not what they're for so forget about that but zero to 60 times zero to 100 times the 500r is still the better bike despite the fact that it is heavier so that's one of the common misconceptions about the bike that i thought you guys should know about 500rs the 2016s look fantastic now the older years were kind of plain and not as exciting but the new years are ex Really, I mean, they got some aggressive stylings and kind of color schemes that look really great. Really make it look like one of the top bikes. I mean, aside from like the super, super top end motorcycles out there. I'm thinking like the H2s and the R1s. Tying back with the whole that this is the one bike that you can keep because it's an all-rounder bike. Despite this can, being considered an entry or beginner bike, I've had it for over a year now. I still love it. I don't need more than this bike right now for the kind of riding I do like 90% of the time. Even with the highways, even though I say I appreciate the power that the FC07 has, this still can do the job. Not as well, definitely, but it still gets the job done. So I feel like with the smaller bikes, that's where you'll definitely outgrow much, much quicker. So you'll buy them and then quickly feel that you need to resell and upgrade to another bike. Whereas this, if you want to, you can appreciate the power this offers and keep it for a very long time. This can be your one bike. And let me guess, you want to go in the right lane? Hey, I knew it! I knew it. Turn signals don't exist. So I feel that despite the fact that the 500Rs are typically more expensive, they're going to last longer with you. It's going to be a bike that you can keep and you don't need to resell as fast. So they offer better value in that. So I've done videos already talking about my FZ07 and comparing it to the CBR 500R and why I think the FZ07 is probably the champ when it comes to being an all-rounder motorcycle, but why I thought that the 500R is still the better beginner bike. I still hold that opinion, 
and believe just because this is more beginner friendly you're not going to get in trouble on it as easily just because it is more tame of a bike however if you are someone who has some experience already you're considering this bike or the fz07 you want to hear my opinion on the fz07 and what i think you should know before getting it as your first motorcycle check out my series of reviews on the fz07 but anyways guys as with all my videos i hope this was helpful in helping you decide what motorcycle is right for you either if you're just getting into motorcycles or you're trying to get back into motorcycles questions or comments leave them below either myself or someone else on the channel will be able to help you down there and as always guys stay tuned for the latest of content on my channel by subscribing and liking i try to upload weekly or twice a week and as always guys until next time Bye.